All right, any curlers in the house? My name's Bruce. I love the sport of curling. And tonight, I'm here to talk about the ancient mystery of curling. Why does the curling stone curl? You may have seen it at the Olympics, the Norwegian men with their fancy pants. It's a wonderful community sport. People of all ages and all abilities can curl. And the Norwegian Paralympic team also wears the fancy pants and their wheelchairs are cool. It's a simple game. Teams of four take turns sliding granite stones down a long sheet of ice, trying to get closest to the target at the other end. Now, there's a few things that curling is not. It is not how Arnold <laughs> builds his biceps. It's not how Nicole makes her hair so pretty. And it is not shuffleboard on ice. <laughs> With shuffleboard, you push a biscuit and it shuffles. Curlers have stones. <laughs> And they curl. You curl it, you spin it clockwise, it goes to the right. You spin it counterclockwise, and it goes to the left. Very cool. But physics tells us that it should not do that. And to find out why, you can try a science experiment. Get yourself a beer. Empty the beer. Turn the glass upside down, shove it across the table, and spin it. And you'll find that it curls in the opposite way that a curling stone does. And to see why, you look at friction. Friction, the evil red force of friction, pulls against anything that's moving, like a sliding glass. It also works against the spin. We call that spin friction. Always in every direction, but always against the spin. Now, if a glass is sliding and spinning, as it comes to a halt, it tips up a little bit. And that's just like when you're on a bicycle and you put on your brakes, you tip up a little bit. That's called the braking torque. And with the braking torque, it puts a little more pressure on the leading edge than on the trailing edge. And when you put a little more pressure on the leading edge than on the trailing edge, you get more friction up front and less friction in the back. And the evil red forces of friction then are greater in the front than they're in the back. And it pulls that glass a little bit to the left. And that's why a glass curls to the left. The question is, why does the curling stone go to the right? when the glass goes to the left. Now, you may wonder why I care so much about this, other than I am an admitted lover of curling. I, I care about this because my father was a curler. He curled in a little town called Monroe, Wisconsin, and my mother was a curler. Now, this over here is my mother's curling brush. I'll show you something. Oh yeah, mom was cool. Now, the cool people in Portland go to Lloyd Center to curl. It's pretty cool, it's got ice, it's ice skating ice. Not really curling ice, but it's still pretty cool. And it's that cool ice that makes the curling stone curl. Because you see, as something, as a curling stone comes to a halt and it has the braking torque and it tips up a little bit, it presses down into the ice, and that warms the ice. And when you warm ice, it makes it more slippery. It lowers the coefficient of friction. So you may have noticed that warm ice is slipperier than cold ice. So you see, ice is cool. And that makes the, the friction greater in the back, which pulls the curling stone the other direction than the drinking glass. Incidentally, this is also why curlers sweep so furiously in front of the curling stones. It warms the ice, and you see warming the ice makes it even cooler. <laughs> but the coolest ice is dedicated curling ice. Dedicated curling ice on the west coast of the United States can only be found in Seattle, but someday we will have dedicated curling ice in Portland, and that will be the coolest. <laughs> Everyone will be happy. And remember, the Norwegian men have the fancy pants, but the Swedes get all the girls. So thank you. 
My name is Bruce, I am a curler, and you too can be a curler this Sunday at Lloyd Center for $10. Come on out and try it. Thank you.